we're going to talk about some of the different indexes that are out there. The, the, the cool term is indices. So the financial indexes, if you look at a whole series of them, the, probably the Dow Jones Industrial Average, that is the ultimate one to be on. It is the top 30 big capitalization companies. We call these companies blue chips because only the blue bloods can sit down and go to them. So that being said, okay, you have the Dow Jones Industrial Average. They track the 30 largest capitalized companies out there. And sometimes you'll see the, uh, the actual process of what's going on over here. The current list is here on the left, the 3M company, Johnson & Johnson. You'll see them all over there. It's, it'll change a little bit. It's really kind of funny because we call it the Industrial Average, but some of these aren't even industrial. Nike is industrial. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting term, and it's hung around a long, long time. The one that owns the listing is actually the Wall Street Journal because it's owned by the Dow Jones Company. So that being said, they decide who gets to play games in this one over here, but they're all really based upon capitalization and how physically big the company is. So that, that being said, or how financially stable they are in the process. You have another one out there. It's called the Standard & Poor's 500. We, nobody even knows about Standard & Poor's. We just call it S&P 500. 500, and it's got it really draws from 11 different industries from any exchange. So you see them, it also includes all the Dow Jones companies as well. I put this chart in here for your reference. You can see the 11 different major industrial categories that we have information technology, healthcare, consumer discretionary, financials, communities, communication services, industrials real industrials, consumer staples, energy, materials, real estate, utilities. Those are the seven different major sectors we have in our different economy. And, and this is how you track it really on the S&P 500. So you'll see that aspect of it. The NASDAQ we talked about the, uh, previously in the, in the last episode, okay, it really has 2,500 companies, the exchange and trade, including foreign companies. It's a different thing because you value weight the index and, and it really has a, a, a bent towards technology. So if you're involved in watching technology, and I guess who is it nowadays, you want to pay attention to the NASDAQ on, on a really regular basis. Now, that being said, from my perspective, if you're going to have a really good portfolio that's going to include stocks, you need to have some technology stocks. This is one, one indice you should probably be involved in. You can kind of see some of the differences here. Here's the S&P 500, the NASDAQ and Dow Jones. You can kind of see how it, all during the pandemic, you'll see on the very bottom of this chart, you'll see from 1990 all the way past 2020, you can kind of see what happened. You can see where the pandemic was, that gigantic drop. Boom. But you'll see that the pandemic operated differently for the different type of indices. So you'll see over here that the Dow Jones hardly took a real major dent at all where the Dow, the, you really have that at the very bottom, but you'll also see, excuse me, the S&P 500, but the Dow Jones took a major hit because of the area that was in it. Now, I mentioned previously, the NASDAQ also is a big player in technology stocks. You look at the NASDAQ, you'll see the NASDAQ actually peaked much earlier than the other ones returned back at one point its valuation exceeded that of the Dow Jones because during the pandemic, we had a major shift where people started buying things online. And all of a sudden we had a major shift because keep in mind in 2019 was the first year that we that the print media was eclipsed by social media marketing. We were already moving towards a technology heavy economy and boom, the pandemic shoved us even further over that. So you'll, you'll see some things where you need to pay attention to what's out there, what's moving. And you'll see sometimes when you look in the different indexes that you're paying attention to what's going on and the type of stocks they represent. Here's another one over here, the, the, the FT Wilshire Equity Index. It really is U.S. companies only, and it really is a large cap. You have three different caps, but by cap, large capitalization index, they have a mid capitalization index and a small capitalization index. The three different ones, you can kind of see the differences in the chart over there. You can kind of see, see the bump over there again when you look at 2019 and 20 you know, of the, what happened there with the, with the pandemic that we had. So that being said, you'll see how it affected the different companies and really some, some of the large caps you, you'll see on the bottom, it didn't affect them as dr drastically as a small cap. So that being said, the COVID pandemic really had a huge impact 
but pay attention to the different indexes as to what you're shopping for. Pay attention to the, the big three already we talked about, the Dow, S&P 500, and NASDAQ. But when you start getting involved at a deeper level, start paying attention to the Wilshire equity indexes. It'll help you an awful lot. Russell indexes, they only have common stock, not preferred, and, and anything that is U.S. only. It's got a 3,000 index, the largest ones. So it's got a large cap index. We call that a large cap or capitalization. Okay, And it's got a 2,000 index with the smallest ones that are on it as well. Uh, the Wilshire Value Index Group, so you have a couple things to watch when you look at the really focused market segments. If you're going to be involved in the heavy way in the stock exchange, you need to explore these on a regular basis. Here's another chart of the different types of stock market sectors. I included this again so you see the focus is, is the what you're looking at. The, the S&P 500, they have a healthcare index. They have an energy index. Also, you're looking at a foreign stock indexes, which I occasionally I track them on a regular, on a, not, not regular as I should be, but I, I have had stocks. And overseas, I really think you should pay attention to an Asian market as well as the South American market as well as the European market. It depends how much money you have to invest in the process. On the global indexes, sometimes you can pay attention not just to stocks only, but also kick in on ETFs and mutual funds, which we'll cover at a little bit later than, than this segment over here. Brokers. A broker is an agent. They buy and sell orders for investors. If you hire on with a broker, you're going to pay the broker a fee, and hopefully the broker is worth it so that you can actually earn some more money because they'll give you recommendations. Um, I was on a retirement board, and we had lots of millions of dollars to play with. And so, so with that, we would actually have a broker come in at our quarterly meetings and give some recommendations, and we actually shift and look at our different risk factors. We had three different sectors. We had a, a, a no-risk, medium-risk, and, 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 and the small risk, different the different venues. And so we had different investments on the different aspects of it. So we handled that. So it depends what you want. A broker, they have to pass a series seven exam and they get paid based on the trade. So keep in mind, they're gonna want you to buy, 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 because the more you buy, the more you sell, then the more money they get because they get something off each trade that you make, whether it's a buy trade or a sell trade. So they, they make their money. So they're gonna recommend you take action on a regular basis. And hopefully, if you're using a broker, they're smart enough to sit down and make you money in the process. If they don't, dump them and get somebody else or get out of the market altogether. Sometimes it's a good idea. Now, keep in mind, there's different terminology here. Okay, there's a bid quote and an ask quote. Those are a big deal. So the bid quote is the highest price that the market maker, in other words, the ones that's out there, is willing to pay for a security. And it's the highest price that the investor can sell the stock. So a bid quote is what, what the most money you can possibly get. The ask quote, okay, is ask quote, okay, A-S-K, okay, don't think I said something else, okay, the lowest price of the market makers will win us out for a security, okay, and the lowest price you can purchase the stock. So you could be purchasing at the ask quote. Then you have a thing called the bid ask spread, okay, and that said, sometimes you're teeny tiny, like only a cent difference, and sometimes you're like 15 cent difference between the two, and so you got to watch what you're going to be paying for in the process, so you'll get the hang of it after you do three or four trades, you'll start getting the, the, the rhythm as to the difference between a bid quote and an ask quote, and the market order, it's an order place with the broker to buy or sell at the current price. So you have a different terminology and you have to get the jargon down pat if you're going to be a serious investor on a regular basis. So on the indices, the big three to pay attention to all the time, S&P 500, I think is the most relevant one to pay attention from my perspective. The Dow Jones, they're the blue chip stocks. They're the ones that almost, they're giant money machines and the chance of them being damaged by the economy is much smaller than it would be the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, keep in mind that they're really their focus is technology stocks and they're not just American stocks. So diversify your indices and also shop other types of markets. Don't get stuck with just being caught here in the process. You have a lot of other companies that are out there looking. Nowadays, you have a 50, a, a huge multi trillion dollar investment promised by different governments for green energy. There's a lot of money there. So pay attention to what that is out there as well. So financial indices, 
pay attention to them. And once you start developing your portfolio, once you start looking out there, start looking at other besides the big three, for you can find different opportunities that may not exist or be apparent to you, but you can see them if you see a focused different indices that you can look at in the process. Take care.